Okay, here we go. Mr. Caballero, I want you to tell me who the exchange student was that survived the brutal murders of eight student nurses in Chicago. Now don't, don't uh, go crazy on him here. Give him a chance. Okay? In other words, we're having 20 matching questions, and we're having 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15. 15 short answer questions. Okay, got that, Mauricio? Who is that young lady that survived that brutal murder of eight student nurses in Chicago? Who, who survived it? When was it? 6, 1966, at a glance. July. July. I think Warner's all over it. Who is it? Corazon. Corazon Amurso. Yeah, thank you. Corazon Amurso. Okay? Obviously, if they're matching, you don't have to worry about what? Okay. Okay, Miss Goodrick. Who was the Texas governor that LBJ ran against in the Senate Democrat Democratic primary election after World War II? Who was the Texas governor that LBJ ran against in the Senate Democratic primary election? In other words, he had to defeat him in the primaries, and he easily won the general election, but his biggest competition was in the primaries. You would be very disappointed if I drank this in New Orleans. Coke Stevenson. Okay. Callie, my dear, who was the congressman that LBJ worked as a congressional secretary for from 1932 until 1937? Richard Kleber. Richard Kleber. Very good. Brianna Mickelson, who is Roger Chaffee? Roger Chaffee. Roger Chaffee. Roger Chaffee. If you get to the Apollo missions, you'll have an idea. Roger Chaffee. I like the expression I would <laughs> Roger Chapman. Oh, I found it. Did he die? He is dead. You got it half right. He was assigned to. He was killed in the Apollo mission, the flash fire, and then both the ship. He was killed in the Apollo 1 mission. Yep. Okay. Wait, who is Carl Brashear? Carl Brashear. Carl Brashear. Hey, Allison, who is it? No, the wings went broke down the bridge in Rome. Well, as I said, who knows who Carl Brashear is? Okay, Brianna. He's a Navy diver who found the hydrogen bomb. Off the coast of Spain on March 23, 1966. Carl Brashear. No, wait, what was, it? what was the date you said? March 23rd. If I went any slower, I'd be hard on it. Stop. You said you weren't in a hurry. Your, well, not, your best bet, I always get crack up watching you guys, your best bet would be to get on the ID sheet. Oh, okay. Great. So Taylor, Falker, please give me the birth name of Lady Bird Johnson. Oh, I can do that. Birth name of Lady Bird Johnson. Claudia Alta Taylor. Very good. Claudia Alta Taylor. Okay, Jacob, key into Apollo 8. 
in Apollo 8, who is the lunar module pilot? In Apollo 8, who is the lunar module pilot on Apollo 8? Um, hey, William, Alex, my dear. William Anders. William Anders, that away. William Anders was the lunar module pilot. Thank you for coming to this class. We're a little bit into the review, but we can get it back here. We recruit for a recording. Okay, raise your hand if you know this answer. Who hit his 535th home run on September 17, 1966, at the time that moved him into second place behind Babe Ruth among career home run hitters? Aubrey. Willie Mays. That away. Willie Mays. Willie Mays hit his 535th home run on September 17, 1966, which moved him into second place at the time among career home run hitters behind Babe Ruth. <coughs> hey, Alex, I'm going to give you one here. Who led the NBA in scoring prior to February 15, 1966? Who led the NBA in scoring prior to February 15, 1966? Who's <laughs> um, back back MVP all time? Oh, I'm going to help you out. Oh, that might be. Help her out. Who is it? Bob Pettit. Bob Pettit. Bob Pettit was the man who held the NBA scoring record prior to February 15, 1966. But Alex does know the leading score in NBA history. So we don't need another for the test. Okay. Carefully, Haley. Who was the congressman who died in office that LBJ was elected to and served the remainder of his term? What's that? <coughs> Congressman. Uh, James P. James P. Buchanan. Very good. Okay. He was the congressman. What's the difference between a congressman and a senator? One's in the House and one's in the Senate. Right. Okay. Carmen. Who was the senator who died in office that LBJ was not elected to the serve the remainder of his term? Morris Shepard, very good. Morris Shepard. Hey, Braden, who was the Republican senator that ran against Lyndon Johnson for president in 1964? Wasn't that Barry Goldwater? Barry Goldwater, very good. Barry Goldwater. Yep, the Republican senator who ran against LBJ in the presidential election of 1964. That was so very gold. Morris Shepard was the Senate? He was a guy that died in the Senate, and Johnson tried to fill him, you know, be elected to fill his term, but he did not get elected. He lost that election and went back to the House of Representatives until he ran for the Senate. The next time in which he defeated Coke Stevenson in the primary and then easily won the Senate seat after that. Okay? okay. All right. <clears throat> Ashton, how did your competition go, by the way? I think it went all right. Well, good. When are you going to find out? Next Friday. Oh, boy. Okay, who was the Republican vice presidential candidate in the election of 1964? Um, wait, can you repeat the question? Yeah. Who was the Republican vice presidential candidate in the election of 1964? In other words, he would have run with Barry Goldwater. Um, William Miller. William Miller. And was he liberal or conservative, Emory? Conservative. Is he conservative? Yes. That cost him, didn't it? Because he promised to nominate a liberal. Very good. Okay, get Gemini 7 and Apollo 8 in your mind, Emmy. Who was the command pilot of both Gemini 7 and Apollo 8? Both command pilot, in other words, he was the commander of the entire mission, 
of both Gemini 7 and Apollo 8? Frank Borman. Yep, Frank Borman. Very good. Here's a one for you. Aaron, I'm counting on you here. Who was the astronaut that during the time aboard Gemini 7 read the book Drums Along the Mohawk during his free time? Which one of the astronauts on Gemini 7 read the book Drums Along the Mohawk? James, James Lovell. James Lovell, very good. Yep, James Lovell, very good. Jay Lynn, who was the astronaut that commanded Gemini 6A? That was the rendezvous and docking procedure mission. Wasn't up there very long. Who was the astronaut that commanded Gemini 6A? <clears throat> Gemini 6A. Sharara Jr., is that right? Also was a Mercury 7 astronaut. Very good. Okay, Jewel, I'm counting on you here. Who is the one-time NBA scoring leader known in sports history as the Stilt? <laughs> that was his nickname, the Stilt. One time. Doesn't lead the NBA scoring anymore because, as Alex will tell you, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is the leading scorer in NBA history at this point. But who once was that went into NBA sports history known as the Stilt? Wilt the Stilt Chamber. Very good. Yeah. Who says Jewel doesn't know sports? She knows it. Okay, Emma. Who was the convicted rapist who revolutionized the meaning of you have the right to remain silent? Who was the convicted rapist who revolutionized the phrase, you have the right to remain silent? You have the right to an attorney. You cannot afford an attorney, what will be appointed for you? Do you understand? Richard? No, but I've never heard of the spec rights. Oh. Emery? Ernesto Miranda. For Ernesto Miranda. The Miranda rights. You have the right to remain silent. So. The convicted rapist who revolutionized the meaning of you have the right to remain silent was Ernesto Miranda. Emily, who is the student at the University of Texas who shot and killed several people from the top of the clock tower on campus? Crazy guy. Yep. It wasn't the Kennedy Whitman, was it? And I'm on it today, huh? <laughs> So who was it, Emily? I don't know his first name, but it was something with him. Really? You like you like peanuts? Snoopy, you know? Sure. I okay. don't like peanuts. But... No, peanuts. <laughs> peanuts the cartoon with Snoopy. Charles Whitman. Charles Whitman. You should remember that now. There should be no doubt when you think of the Kennedy Whitman. Now I just think of okay. I'm really dying. Charles Whitman. Okay, Paige, Mr. Gall. Who was the first professional golfer in history to win back-to-back -back Masters Golf Championships? Yeah. Hoyt? Oh, got it. it. Jack Nicholas. <laughs> Jack Nicholas. I was going with Hoyt Nicholas. It's only a different spelling. See? Shouldn't forget that one either. No. They have given you a lot of good hints here. Okay. Miss Warner, give me one political position that was held by Lyndon Johnson during his political career. One political position held by Lyndon Johnson during his political career. Just one. Just one. Just one. Senate Majority Leader. Perfect. Give me another one, Sadria. President of the United States. Cop out. Okay, Aubrey. Hold on. I was confused. So I'm looking for all the political positions at Lyndon Johnson. Taylor was kind enough to say what? Senate Majority Leader. Savior went way out on a limb and said President of the United States. How about another one, Aubrey? <laughs> we'll come back to you. Schneid? Don't be bashful. You know, what? 
Yeah. Oh, okay, you two are really all over the <laughs> Vice President of the United States, Schneid, another one. Oh, here's Page? Congressman. He was a congressman. Tally? Senator. Senator? Taylor? Senate Minority Leader, we got one more. What was it, Allison? Anybody? Congressional Secretary. Congressional Secretary. You need to know all seven political positions that Lyndon Johnson <laughs> held during his political career. President, Vice President, Senate Majority Leader, Senate Minority Leader, Senator, Congressman, and Congressional Secretary. Okay? Okay, Carmen, give me one example of why Lyndon Johnson did not enjoy his role as vice president. One example. There's two. I'm going to get them both, but I'm going to get the first one from you. Okay. Okay, one example of why Lyndon Johnson did not enjoy his role as vice president, according to friends and historians. Mauricio? He had no power. He had no power. He had less power than he even did as Senate Majority Leader. What was the other one, Alex? Uh, he felt that he was running second for the to a guy who had less Very good. I was going to use the musical metaphor and you did it for me. Yeah, he didn't like playing second fiddle to a person with less political experience. Second fiddle means you're not first fiddle. It's like first chair in band, right? If you're first chair, you're all over, right? Your second chair, you're okay, but you're not supposedly as good as first chair. Is that how it works? Well, he thought the same thing. He thought that, yeah, I should, I should, yeah that's what I think. But anyway, the point being is he didn't like playing second fiddle or second saxophone or second clarinet or whatever you want to call it to a less experienced man. Use whatever musical instrument you would like to explain that with the caveat that you're going to say to a less experienced man, okay? So feel free to express yourself. Okay, Hoyt, give me one of the two pieces of legislation that were passed under the National Defense Education Act and tell me what that act provided. Give me one of the two acts passed under the National Defense Education Act and tell me what it provided. You're sitting here with these free binders because of it. Uh... Taylor? Miss Taylor? Yeah, the question is, name one piece of legislation passed under the National Defense Education Act and tell me what the law provided. Oh, I got it. Hey, no, wait, go ahead, we'll give Aaron well, a chance to get the second one. This is just the elementary and secondary act? Yeah, then you need to say elementary and secondary education act, and what did it provide? Government money for? Government money for schools. What type of schools? Elementary, Elementary and secondary, secondary schools. schools. Okay, because there's a difference. Because what was the second one, Aaron? Did you get that? Higher Education Act. Higher Education Act. We provided government money for what? Colleges and universities. Know the difference. So don't shorten that answer because you're writing that answer as if somebody that didn't know it is going to read it. So the Elementary and Secondary Education Act provided federal federal money or federal dollars for elementary and secondary schools. The Higher Education Act provided federal dollars for colleges and universities. Okay? Give me one thing, Jewel, that the Medicare bill of 1965 provided. And you guys be specific on these. Name one thing it provided. Um, What's that? How old did you have to be, my dear? It didn't provide, medical care is too broad, it provided what? It provided what to people 65 and over? Low cost, go ahead, medical insurance. Okay, what does that pay for, just out of curiosity? No. Well, that's, well, that's, those are two separate things. that's right. Low cost medical insurance for people 65 and over, and low cost hospital insurance. 
Yeah, medicals, prescriptions, doctor visits, etc. Hospital is pretty self-explanatory. Things that occur in the hospital will be paid. So here's the answer to the question, and the question again. Name the three things the Medicare bill of 1965 provided. One, it provided low-cost hospital insurance for people 65 and over. It provided low-cost medical insurance for people 65 or over. Emery, what's the third thing it did? To people that were under the age of 65. Uh, two individual Okay, but two individual what? You said it right. Read what you said again first. You provided medical aid through federal grants. Through individual states. states. Remember, they gave those federal grants to states, and then they could decide upon themselves on how they administered it to people below the age of 65. So now read that again because it's a good answer, and Maria just wants to get the whole thing. Um, it provided citizens below 65 medical aid through federal grants through individual states. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Okay, give me one major part of the Apollo rocket Saturn V, Levi. Could be one major part of the Apollo rocket Saturn V. And this is Saturn V, by the way. But I want I want the three major parts. Fuel tanks I don't care about. The rocket boosters I don't care about. Give me a part. The command, module. command module. Very good. Give me another one, Ashton. Service module. Service module. Give me the third one, Cedria. The lunar module. Lunar module. You need to know those three. So, let me re-add this up. I think I might have added it up wrong. 20 and 35 is what? 55. Okay, I might miss here. How many of you really like match? What do you, oh, let's make a book. Would you rather have the match 